Few parents realize that the Wi-Fi box just five feet over the heads of children in our schools is broadcasting radiation at the exact same frequency as a microwave oven, but without shielding throughout the day. Children's brains are just not as fully developed and can't block as much of the radiation as an adult brain. I believe that most parents and school board officials would act to hold off wireless ne networks if they knew these risks. Of course, there are no such risks if you put ordinary fiber optic or cable in our schools and the computers are plugged in. One place that switched off its Wi-Fi connection is Upper Sturt Primary School. Principal Bob Jones. There's not enough evidence um, that Wi-Fi is completely safe at this stage. Um, we haven't had it long enough. It was um, very difficult to find a school that uh, was Wi-Fi free. Tony Glab, mother to Alexander and Christina, was adamant she wanted to send her son to a Wi-Fi free zone after learning the World Health Organisation classified it as a potential carcinogen. We have those lessons from history where we know that governments take often decades to respond and act in the interests of public health and safety and that's clearly shown with asbestos and smoking and lead. Um, so once again, this is one of these issues that potentially in 20, 30 years time we may look back and say, gee, why did we do that to our children? Students still have the use of computers, but they're hardwired, which means no radioactivity is emitted. We wanted our children to understand that computers are a tool. They're not the first part of research. Um, They'd, or they don't have to be. It's an idea that countries like France, Russia, Italy, China and Switzerland implemented in schools, kindergartens and daycare centres years ago. You cannot live by a precautionary principle on this count that says Ooh, because we may not know something, we must do nothing and we would hardwire all devices. It makes no sense. Given the risks involving children, the principal just doesn't want to take that risk. Whether this is true or not, the default, I think, needs to be on the side of safety. So it was very easy for me just to, to remove it. Is this a uh, dass den Menschen bewusst wird, dass wenn sie ein Mobiltelefon verwenden oder auch einen drahtlosen Anschluss, WLAN oder Wi-Fi oder auch schnurlose Telefone, dass sie sich Mikrowellenstrahlung aussetzen, aber nicht nur selbst, sondern auch ihre Familie, ihre Nachbarn und dass eine chronische Belastung zu einem erhöhten Risiko für bestimmte Erkrankungen führen kann. Das sind neurodegenerative Erkrankungen, denken Sie an Parkinson oder Alzheimer und das sind auch Erkrankungen wie etwa Hirntumoren und andere Erkrankungen. Das ist ein, ein ernstes Problem, das wir haben. In terms of the, you know, Wi-Fi in schools and multiple um, um, devices and the kids having iPads and uh, all of that, um, th there's a, the, the medical term for that is effing crazy. Okay, and there is no room in our schools for that. Um, and I think that uh, for the reasons that we have talked about here, the developing brain, you know, brain cells are differentiating in those young kids more than they're proliferating. There is just no way that we should be doing that to our kids. Uh, we can plug it in and it's fine. So um, uh, that's, that's one, one place where I think we have to draw the line. still argue that non-thermal effects haven't been adequately proven or that we need more science, more research. I would dispute that on the basis of this, that there are tens of thousands of research papers now. Of course there is some inconsistency, we would expect that when we're looking at non-linear biological systems being observed in different labs all over the world, but the majority do demonstrate harm, and when I say the majority it's around 70% 
of unbiased literature. And uh, there is so much evidence that at least some people, if not everybody, is going to be adversely affected by the excessive radio frequency fields that you would have if you have a computer classroom where 20 kids or 30 kids are sitting on their wireless laptops generating a room just chock full of radio frequency radiation. But one would hope that safety limits are in place to protect us, and unfortunately they are not, not in this country and not where I currently reside in the UK. The reason I say that is because we are using something called the ICNIRP guidelines, and they were designed to protect against thermal effects only, that means tissue heating. We know that there are many non-thermal effects that, accord, uh, that occur orders of magnitude below those levels. And don't take my word for that. So this is uh, from the United States Environmental Protection Agency. And the last line you'll see states, the generalization by many that the guidelines protect human beings by harm uh, from all or any mechanisms is not justified. So many countries have lowered their guidelines to try to be more biologically protective. And even in these countries, those very low limits are still being criticized as not being low enough because there is scientific evidence of effects even below those levels which are much lower than ours in the UK and here in the US.